Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Blue Ember. This is an XLR studio microphone, a condenser style microphone with an XLR interface. And this is an unboxing and review video where I'm going to be showing you what's in the box, setting it up on a couple of different boom arms, and talking to you about the overall capture quality and the features and facets of this microphone. Now, this is a relatively affordable XLR microphone obviously one that will require a mic stand or a boom arm as well as an XLR interface. It's a condenser microphone so it requires 48 volts of phantom power and can be powered by something like the Go XLR or in this case the Elgato Wave XLR which is the interface that I'm using to capture the voiceover for this video. I am using the mic for the entirety of this video so that you can get an idea of the capture quality. And as you'll hear it is a very rich Good sounding quality with a couple of little problems that include picking up plosive sound. You'll notice that the P's in the way I'm speaking are over exaggerated and that's something to bear in mind. It is a very nice looking microphone. As you'll see, a very slim looking microphone, but weighty, solid and superb looking. In the box, you get the mic itself as well as the little attachment to put it on the boom arm. This is a bracket that essentially screws to the bottom, and I'll show you the process for that in a minute, and then attaches to your mic arm. The box also tells you that it's a side address microphone, so you're meant to talk into the front of it, not the top. It has a cardioid pickup pattern that picks up from the front where the logo is, so you have to get the mic into the position where you can then talk into the tip of it. What you'll see is a very nice looking mic, a good premium quality microphone, with a really good style to it. In the box you also get a little note about the style of the microphone, the 48 volts of phantom power that's required, and the fact that it's obviously XLR powered. One thing you will notice is there's no XLR cable included in the box. You also don't have any sort of desk mount or stand to put it on. So if you buy just this, you're gonna be disappointed. You can't plug it into your PC with a USB cable, for example. And in this case, I, as I said, I am using the Elgato Wave XLR interface, and I am using that at about half gain. So you will need to tweak around with the settings in order to get it sound good. The stand itself is a really simple sort of setup though. Basically just screws into the bottom and then you can adjust the wheel on there to then move it around. Obviously you want to get it into a position where you can comfortably get it in front of your mouth and close enough. And this is a balance that you will need to strike and I'll show you a bit more about this later on in terms of getting it close enough that you can turn the gain down to counter the background noise but also not so close that it'll pick up all the wind and pops from your mouth, which is an unfortunate downside of this condenser mic setup. Now this setup is with the Elgato mic arm. So this is Elgato's mic arm, and that comes with a little adapter in the box that allows you to screw into the standard mount with the blue ember and you can then fit it on with the thread. This should fit the majority of mic arms, so you should find that you haven't got a problem with it. I have used it on the NZXT mic arm and the Elgato Wave mic arm that you'll see in here, and so I can tell you that it will fit comfortably on a number of different mic arms quite well. Basically, it easily, it simply screws into place here. The bonus of this attachment at the bottom, obviously, is that that has a little mount in itself, so even when it's screwed down, you can then also adjust it in a number of different ways. For reference, this Elgato mic arm is very nicely built as well, and it has a head on it that's fully adjustable in a number of different directions. So actually, this setup is a very comfortable and convenient combination, which allows you to position the mic in a multitude of different ways, which is obviously important because of that side address nature of it, because you basically need to turn it so it sits like this, so you'd be face onto it. So it's tricky to get into the right position, but not so much with this combination of the stand on the bottom the attachment and the mic arm itself. So fairly straightforward to be able to get those into that position. Then we just need to plug the XLR cable in and then connect it up. So a relatively simple affair, but you can see a really good looking mic here. This is one of the better looking mics that I've seen. A lot of them are very boring looking. Black affairs, this has a sort of uh, off blue 
grey gunmetal styling to it. It's hard to put my finger on what the colour is, but it is a very nice looking colour and also a good, capable microphone. Now, I include all the specs in the description, but this is a frequency response of 38 hertz to 20,000 hertz, and it also is capable of capturing some great sound. And more importantly, it's also fantastic looking, as you can see with a close-up shot of it. But unfortunately, there's no shock mount or pop filter included as standard. So although it is an affordable purchase, you probably will need to buy a windshield of some sort or a pop filter uh, to counter the issue. Obviously, also the extra purchase here is you need an XLR interface if you don't have one already. The Wave XLR on the left here and then the larger more capable perhaps go xlr on the right the wave xlr is a really simple interface though i've done a video on this separately you basically plug your xlr cable into the back of it mic monitoring 3.5 mil connection and then a usb-c connection to your pc it has capacitive mute functionality and then you can adjust basically the gain the headphone levels and the mix between those two easily from the interface on the front. This interface also allows you to use 48 volts of phantom power, so it is perfectly placed to work well with this microphone. It's a real simple interface, real easy to use, and it allows you to adjust the gain, which is an important part of it because you need to make sure with this condenser style of microphone that you get things into a good position and the gain as low as possible for the best results. And now I'll show you what I mean. So here I am with the Blue Ember and I wanted to be able to show you how I've positioned it and where it is. So you can see obviously this is the back of the microphone and the front is facing me. This is also the NZXT boom arm that it's mounted to currently, which is a great mic arm by the way. I recommend checking out my video on that, and you'll see that it's very close to my mouth. It's about a fist length, maybe less than that towards me. And the reason for that is to get the gain right down. So it's set somewhere around 50% gain now, maybe a bit lower. If I go into Windows Sound Settings, just check that actually. It's at 79% in there, but on the XLR interface it's showing about... 40% so it's going to vary depending on that to take into account the phantom power but the point is if I turn it up you'll hear a lot more background noise so that is now really high and it is very clear but you can also hear a lot of the surrounding environmental noise from fans on my PC the vehicles passing by outside, etc. So it's better to get it close as possible to you and then counter that sort of thing. Now, when I have it in this position, I also want to demonstrate just quickly what the typing experience is like. So to show you what the sound of a keyboard is like, for example, Logitech G915 TKL, my favorite keyboard. I'm just gonna demonstrate what the sound of the typing on that is not particularly loud. But I'm going to type on it while I'm talking so you can hear the difference and sort of what that can pick up in the background. And what you should find is it's not loads, but a condenser microphone unfortunately does pick up more environmental noise than something like a dynamic mic, like my usual Shaw SM7B for example, which counters out a lot more background noise and manages to compensate for that quite nicely, especially if you're using the Go XLR, because you can use that interface for compressor and noise suppression settings and things like that. Oh, I'm sure the quality is a bit better. Um, whereas this mic isn't running through that interface, which isn't necessarily a fair test, but condenser mics generally let in a lot more noise. And so the key is to make sure your environment is dampened as much as possible but also just to minimize the gain the volume of the microphone and get it closer to your mouth and therefore you then cut out a lot of that excessive noise that would otherwise bleed in but because it has a condenser design and a cardioid pickup pattern it means it picks up from the front and you shouldn't pick up too much from the back so with the keyboard behind it and obviously with it off the desk you should find it doesn't pick up too much background noise more importantly, obviously, as you can hear, fantastic capture quality, really good sound, a rich microphone sound. Certainly not as good as the Shure SM7B, 
but this is about four times cheaper or maybe three times depending on where you're from so it is considerably cheaper and yet still a very nice looking microphone with a great capture quality great look good build quality and overall fantastic design this has been the provoke brawn thanks for watching this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.